<laughs> Hi there. So what day is today? Today's Tuesday. It's the Tuesday after Easter. And I wanted to read a chapter of scripture to you. This is from 1 Corinthians 13. And I'm going to read it from the Living Bible. So it's, it's put in more modern terms. And then I'll tell you why I read that. If I had the gift of being able to speak in other languages without learning them, I could speak in every language there is in all of heaven and earth, but didn't love others, I would only be making noise. If I had the gift of prophecy and knew all about what is going to happen in the future, knew everything about everything, but didn't love others, what good would it do? Even if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, I would still be worth nothing at all without love. If I gave everything I have to poor people, and if I were burned alive for preaching the gospel but didn't love others, it would be of no value whatever. And then it goes on to talk about what love looks like, okay? Love is very patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even, hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. If you love someone, you will be loyal to him no matter what the cost. You will always believe in him, always expect the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him. So I thought that was neat. And the reason why this came to mind today and why I wanted to share that with you is because I was doing my little daily blessing. And that is this body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I love this body because it's a gift from God himself. And all of a sudden I stopped. And it's like, wait, I love this body. And I, I know love is a choice. I know love is a decision. But we also tend to associate love with feelings, like like feelings of affection. And it's not always affection that we should be looking for. And this paragraph was telling us about what love looks like. Love is really patient, very patient. It's very kind. It's not jealous. It's going to speak kindly of others. And I, you know, the Lord just brought to mind, he's like, you need to love this body. And and I tend to be judgmental of my body because it doesn't do what I want it to do. It's not as thin as I'd like it to be or maybe as strong as I'd like it to be. And um, it's, I looked at that and I he, he was just making me realize I need to be patient and kind with myself. I need to be patient with my body it's doing the best it can. I need to be patient with myself. Um, I'm I'm learning all the time. Uh, just just the, the one the, the one of the most that came out was to me was the patience, the uh, being patient and kind with myself, and being patient and kind with my body. That if I love this body that God has loaned me for His service then I need to appreciate it and I need to love it. And then I got to thinking about the other ways to show love. And by eating properly, giving it rest, giving it exercise. Um, you know, if I could kind of step away from myself and think, what would I do to take care of this thing? How do I, how do I take care of this person? What's the best way? And it's not by giving ourselves treats, you know. I know over the years it's gotten real easy to associate love with treats. Oh, I want to, you know, have chocolate or overeat or eat only foods I love. And, and it, you know, we, we, it's real easy to get off track with what love means and thinking that these things that aren't necessarily really healthy for us are ways that we show love to ourselves because we, we give ourselves allowances. and But really loving ourselves, we're going to take care of ourselves. We're going to take care of this body. And I do, I do try to take care of this body, but I 
I don't think that the, the place that I haven't taken care of myself is in the area of patience. And I need to be more patient and more kind with myself. Um, I, I do eat well. I do try to take care of my body that way. I'm doing better with exercise. Um, if I if I really loved and took care of myself, I'd be more faithful in my time with God. I think my prayer time is the, the area that's kind of lacking. Um, I feel okay about my scripture study, but I still, and that kind of comes from historically from a place of discomfort in my prayer time. And I guess I should try to figure that out, why why it makes me uncomfortable. Um, hmm. I can remember for so many years as a kid feeling as though my prayers were just hitting the ceiling, that they, they weren't heard. And I think it's because I wasn't really in a relationship with God at that point yet. I just wanted fire insurance, but I didn't have lordship so I didn't really have a relationship um I I know now he hears my prayers but and I do pray I mean I do pray I'm I, you know I do pray it's just a different level of prayer I don't pray for myself okay I guess that's the kind of prayer I'm talking about here I I do pray for others I pray for the world I pray for the climate I pray for the church I pray for family I don't really talk to him, though, on a one-to-one -one thing. I don't really share myself with him. And I think that's that's the next area that I need to expand on is being willing to let my guard down with God. It's not like he doesn't know, but that's, that's part of my... part of my stuff is being willing to let him know that for me to, to admit to myself and to let him know where I'm coming from and uh you know the things I struggle with the things that I desire the the relationship I really want with him which is a close relationship and you know with any close relationship you have to be able to share yourself so I'm glad I'm talking this out with you it's helping me to come to the conclusion I'm you know, I, I, we're closed up right now. I don't, we're staying at home. I don't have my friends to talk this out with. <laughs> Women process verbally, you know. I need this verbal processing. And I'm thinking in order for me to feel closer to God, I've got to be willing to be closer with him and to, re, and to share with him my stuff. Because that's what makes me feel close to my friends or close to my husband is when I can share what's, what's important to me, what's personal to me. And if I don't share that with God, then no wonder I don't feel as close to him as I'd like. Hmm. That makes sense, doesn't it? It makes sense. So anyhow, I'm going to be patient and kind with myself. And I think I'm going to have to make that choice to trust God to, to talk to him about myself. And where I'm coming from and allow him to be closer to me draw near to God and he will draw near to you and that's how I need to draw near to him today so um I've appreciated the comments people have been making lately I appreciate your um your support and your encouragement I'm I'm glad that my sharing with you has been a blessing that, you know, we're on this trip together, and that's kind of what I hope, that if I just share my my weaknesses, my joys, my, and, and where I'm from, that you might see that you're not alone, that we are in this together, and that, um, you know, God is always for us and not against us. And uh, when we do have these hard things, that he will see us through it. And it's, you know, having encouragement from one another helps us get through it, too. So what, what do you do to maintain a close relationship with God? What do you do? Okay, I know for me it's when I truly will let myself settle down and, and be close with him and share with him. 
what do you do? Is it the same thing? Is that how you feel close to God? Is that how you experience him the closest is when you're willing to share with him? Or is there some other way that you feel really um, intimate? I guess that's a good word, that you feel intimate with God. I'd be curious to know um, know about you, about your walk. All right, thank you. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Today was 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs>